How do I look, Dave? Fantastic, bro. I would have went with depleted and exhausted, but Damn. I'll take it. So it's been a week, huh? It's been a week, man. It always is when you work in radio. I'm trying to figure out the brightness on this damn screen. There we go. The wor- One of the worst things Apple ever did was create the damn touch bar. Give me some freaking buttons, guys. <laughs> We're analog, okay? Us mil- Come on! <laughs> the millennials, we need a screen that if we touch it, nothing's going to happen. Right. Give me some buttons. Give me some knobs. Uh, bro, it's been a week for me as well. It's just been... Tell me about it. I feel like I did a lot and nothing at the same time. Do you ever do that? Like you just, you know, you had so much going on, but now we sit here on a Sunday as we do. And you look back and you think, did I actually get anything done? Or did all that just blur? Like I've missed all that. Yeah, it all, it all runs together, man. Every single day. That's why I say like, as long as these weeks feel, they fly by so fast because your mind is always moving. It's always mental gymnastics. And then you're like, holy crap, it's Easter Sunday, which, by the way, happy Easter to you, my friend. Dude, happy Easter. I'm on 75 hearts. I'll cheers you with the water. I love it. Can we just talk about that for a second? Like, how many different holidays that we've spent by ourselves because we've moved away from home for, you know, this job to chase this chance to run after this opportunity for this next big gig. And how many years and how many holidays have we missed out with our family? Because like, we really want to be go getters. I I was like, I was kind of, I was in the car today, leaving the gym and my mom called me and she's like, happy Easter. You know, like she does each year, which I didn't get a basket this year. I'm a little pissed off about that, if I can be quite frank. (laughs) First year ever in my life, mom didn't send me an Easter basket. And I get it. I'm 36, but still, (laughs) I was looking forward to those Reese's Cups. I was looking forward to those peeps. There's always a WWE action figure in there. So a little bit bummed out about that. But, man, we've missed so much time. Like, you know, me with my family, you with yours, your dad, your brother, your uncle. Like, we've missed so many holidays. And I wonder if a lot of people listening to this that are kind of in that same go-getter mindset have experienced the same thing. Well, if you're like us and you have been getting after it and you've been in a different city or different country or just far enough away mile-wise that you can't always get home or, or maybe work just demands you're on the road, you've definitely felt that way. It's, there's a loneliness to it. Um, it's part of the sacrifice of moving ahead, moving the ball down the field in your career. And I'm definitely feeling it today as well. I mean, dozens. I can't even count how many holidays I haven't spent, birthdays I haven't spent with family and friends back home. And it's really got me thinking that, like, that's my next stop. Because, you know, last week I was like, hey, um, something's going on. I can't really talk about it. But um, either Tuesday or Wednesday, hitting the road, I'll be back in Maine full time whoa 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 dude let's go oh, yeah, i'm bro. so jealous yeah and and you know Damn. i did a lot of thinking about it i don't know what i think my mind was probably fixated on it since i got down here because i was i was thinking well let's make sure you give this a full effort but don't be so stubborn to just say well i have to hit this arbitrary number of months if you don't feel it in your gut if it doesn't feel like it's working even if you don't have a great concrete answer you should just pivot again I've always been saying pivot you know move on but it just seems to me like the strong place for me to be is back home around family around a lot of business opportunities that I just don't have here I mean I'm not alone here. I have great friends who took me in and we had some ideas on what we wanted to do business wise, but I'm not making money, the money that I want to make. Right. And I could be anywhere making the same amount. So I thought, well, I need to be back home. I just need to be back around Ryan, Maddie B, B Stacks, just, um, you know, back in New England and I'm mentally preparing for this road trip now. And, uh, just one more push, bro. I feel like it's yeah. just like one more push. 
dude, I love that for you. And I'm jealous as all get out because that's the ultimate end game for me too. And we talk about it a lot off the air is, Hey, what if one day we had our own morning show on the radio in Portland, Maine, and it just would be so cool. And it'd be the only reason I'd be willing to wake up that early is to work with you. But (laughs) one of the things you brought up was like, putting in your arbitrary amount of time. And that's something that I've, that I've always taken with me as I'm sure you have too on any big move or any big change I've made. It's like, for example, when I moved to Nashville several, several years ago for this, for for, for, uh, my gig with hot, it was okay. I have to give myself one full calendar year before I can even think about either bailing and going back home or jumping off to the next pad to see what's next. So you kind of make yourself do that. But after you've done it so many times, you're just like, no, no, you know what? I feel it in my gut. I feel it in my heart. I feel like this is the right move. That's where my family is. That's where, you know, my childhood friends are. It just, it, it makes the most sense, man. So I'm really excited for you. Jealous at the same time. I just hope we can get to a point where we're both back at home. Dude, and yes. So many things are, are up in the air for me right now. You know, it's like I, I got a really cool job here that I'm very fortunate to have. Uh, my relationship, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Are we finally growing apart? Was it like more convenient when we lived in the same place? Well, of course it was. Now Always it's not is. convenient. So. It's just, do you quit? Do you, uh, you know, t- take a step back? Do you try to j- just get over to them as fast as you can, which is kind of the route that I've been taking. I'm trying to get further west. But ultimately, the end game is I want to end back up in Portland, Maine, doing small town radio, being surrounded by the people that I care about the most. And there's something said about maturity to be able to get to that point to say, you know what? I've reached after brass ring after brass ring. I've climbed the ladder so many times. It's time to go back to where it all began. And dude, there's literally the cliche is there's no place like home, but when it comes to Portland, Maine, there is no place like home, man. You said it. That's all that was going through my head. It was like Dorothy on the Wizard of Oz, just clicking the heels together. And for so many years, I said, I have to explore other options. I have to know what it's like to live other places. I need to go do that. That was just me. That was the MO. And I'm realizing that I don't have to do anything. Right. I mean, okay, you have to do something. I'm not saying I want to sit around and do nothing, but there's nothing that I must, absolutely must do. And as long as life is, life is also short at the same time. It's such a paradox. Uh, there's just this time in my nephew and niece's lives I'm not going to get to see again. I would like to experience it. And I just know that, um, you know, my dad recently asked me, hey, you know, I've got these projects. To, will you come help me with them? And I'm thinking, my dad's 80. If I wait yeah. five years, are we going to have the same opportunities? I don't, I just don't know at this. It's like, it's not like he's 60, but even that number is arbitrary because some people's health fails. Like you never know. You get hit by a bus, like you're gone in a second. You right. just, you just don't know. And so in, in my head, I'm thinking this might be the last great opportunity. Do some awesome work with your dad, get to hang out, get to experience that when he's really mobile moving. Um, so many things came rushing into my brain. I just thought it's a sign. There's no, there's nothing compelling to keep me where I'm at. So that was like the first test. And the second test was, is there something more compelling to take me somewhere else? That dude, that's a great way to kind of break it all down and look at it. My kind of thing right now is, you know, the the point you brought up about like, well, how much more time are you going to have with, with your dad? Hopefully it's a ton more. He's such an incredible man, you know? Right. And, uh, but that's, that's the thing. It's like, you've been gone a lot longer than I have because you spent the four years in, in school. You know, you have a lot more world experience than I do, even though we're the kind of the, not kind of, we are the same age, but it's like, I've already missed out on six years or so. 
yeah. with my mom and Tim and my dad and my sister and my nephew Ezra. And man, you know, it's like, how much more time can I stay away? And when you first leave, you don't really think about that because you're so tunnel focused on, I got to get to the next town. I got to get to the next job. I got to get, you know, to the next big paycheck. And you just keep running and running and running and running. And I think it's been over this last year and a half since I've taken this job in Denver that I'm kind of like, man, I've missed out on so much time. And I, and candidly speaking, I know my parents have been smokers their entire lives. My Nana passed away from lung cancer. So that kind of really was just like, oh gosh, how much time do I actually have left with my mom? How many more Easter Sundays is she going to call me and tell me happy Easter, you know, and why not be there for that? You know, I think it's always kind of been in our hometown. You got to get out. You got to, if you want to accomplish anything, you have to leave. Right now I'm kind of like, well, gosh, in my mind, I've already reached the mountaintop. You know, sure, I could make more money. Sure, I could live in a bigger state in, or a b- bigger city. But it's like, dude, once you're already here, it's kind of just all the same, no matter what rung you're on. And I'm I'm with you, man. I just want there's there's no place like Portland, Maine, dude. It's just do you ever get off the off the flight and you go down the escalator and there's something different about the air and it's almost like you just immediate and this sounds so stupid but it's almost immediately like you get hugged and you just feel good and you feel safe and you feel home it's wicked nice bub it's the best feeling in the world guy it really is every time i go down those stairs and i'm like Ah, I'm back home and it's just got, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it as stupid as that might sound, but man, I just, I love it. But then you'll get there and after a while you're like, okay, I got to go do something else for a little bit. But I think the overall message I'm trying to get to is there's no better feeling than coming back home. Uh, man, there's no better feeling in college. It was the same way. I was happy to have my couple weeks off and I knew it was And in college. It's different. You don't have to work. Well, I didn't have right. to work all the time. Sometimes I would work at the go-kart track, but you know, it's a college job. It's nothing. Um, are you somebody though, like me, who, when I get to the steps, there's two choices. You can take the escalator or you can walk down the stairs. And if usually if I'm in a hurry, cause you know, you can walk to my dad's, I'm yep. just, whatever's more full, I will take the opposite way. Yeah. Well, here's the thing that is solely based on whether or not they force me to check a bag. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> because if I'm, if I'm going that far, which for me, it's clear across the whole country, right? I got to bring a bag. I got to have different clothes and whatever, whatever. So if they make me check my bag, then I'll take the escalator with the bag, but if they if they don't, because you uh, what is it? You get down there, yeah. So if I have my bag with me, I'll take it down. But if I have to go down to get the bag, I just bolt right down the stairs. Yeah, you you want to get a good spot at the carousel, the luggage carousel. It's important. Like you need to jockey for position a little. Not so much in Portland because there's eight gates and. Uh, there is always the awkward chance that you see somebody you kind of know, or you like recognize, but you don't know, or you, somebody you do kind of know a little better. And do I want to have that whole, we're catching up conversation. There's so, there's so much involved. They usually just have the headphones in. I feel like now that I'm older and I'm a little further removed from being in school, there's less chance that I run into somebody I know, but it's Maine. We kind of all know each other a little bit. You're not kidding. One of my favorite things about the Portland jet port is anytime I've come home, there's always somebody waiting for me in the parking lot. Dude. It's not like I got to loop around and loop around because you can't, you can't park here. You can't put on your hazards and it's another eight minute loop. It's man. It's just so cool. You just walk out. They're waiting for you right there. It's just, there's something to be said about that small town living. There is, you know, and yeah. And I, I miss it, dude. I, I miss it a lot. I really, really do. I, I miss it too. The other side of this, 
Because I think you and me could talk about Maine all day as just like the greatest You're place, not kidding, you know, dude. ever. Yeah. The other side of it is um, it's like a financial crunch. I'm just realizing I don't have consistent money coming in every week. And so, well, what do I do? It's like I have to drum up business again. I would rather go back to where I know I could make a couple thousand dollars in a week, week one, doing work with my dad, whether it's like fixing up some of the properties or doing some eBay or selling some postcards or, I mean, there's so many handyman jobs I can do to make money that I just can't here. And it, it may not be related to video, but in a practical sense, it makes sense. And just in a gut feeling, it makes sense. And I want to, I was just bringing it up because it's just what's been on my mind all week. Yeah. And Um, if you're going to set up home base, you might as well do it at home. And I think, you know, probably some of the stuff that you thought about was like inflation is getting out of control. You know, my, my first year here, it was like, wow, I can't believe I'm making this much money. And it was, you know, it was great. And it was the most I've ever earned being able to do what I do. And I was super thankful for that. And now a year or so later, it's like, where is it going? Man. Where is it going? My savings is going down. And and then obviously we have this pending recession or the way I look at it, we're already in it. You know, it's just going to get worse. So sometimes it's best to go home and regroup and set up home base at home and then just kind of figure out your next move from there. Yeah. And, and you know, the last thing I'll say too is it's been in the back of my head that this would be like... I'm not going to say my last stop. I'm going to keep traveling, but I think it's going to be my last move as far as where am I going to live? I want to set up shop, get a house, do all that. And that along with like my dad's age and what my brother's working on, this is the time I knew it was going to come eventually where I need to come back into the fold of, you know, doing family business stuff. And this is it. This is, you know, I've talked to him, my dad and my brother, and this is the, it's, it's the, it's the timing. It's like, okay, you've done what you wanted. You wanted to do totally had total autonomy, total freedom. And now you're still going to have some autonomy. You're still going to have some freedom, but contribute back to the family that gave you so much and so many opportunities. It's it's the only the right thing to do. It's the thing I wanted to do. So, um, yeah, now I'm prepping for that. Obviously the show doesn't stop, but it's like, kind of have to take a deep breath and say, okay, regroup. One more long drive, 20 or so hours, and then I'll be... bro. It seems like it's 10 less than this other trip, so whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Man. If anybody is like, you know, the master of the road, it's you, bro. You're just up and down those highways, something fierce, brother. I try, you know. I I try not to be, but I'm glad I'm good at it. (laughs) So are you looking at this as kind of like... Because when I explained the route that I want to take to you is Maine is where I want to end up. That's where I want to hang up, you know, not necessarily hang up my boots or my headphones per se. I want to continue to do broadcasting in some capacity, but I want to that like that. I want that to be my last stop. Are you kind of going into this saying that this is going to be for now, which is what it seems like most of our adult lives have been. Well, this is just for now until I get to the next thing. Is it, is that kind of like the same thing here? Or is this like, let me get back. Let me reset. There's no time frame on this. It's not like six months and then I'm off to the next thing. It's I'm going to take my time and this is where I want to be. It's where I want to be. The only The furthest place I'll say that I'll go, unless there was a million dollars attached to it, like, you you know, you're taking the money, would be New York, like a really good opportunity in New York or Boston. And Boston, I could basically just stay in Maine. So this is that, this is the final move. This is the the final stop. I don't see myself long-term in Boston or New York. I just know the opportunities are there. Um, I see myself now long-term in Maine and man, it's, I'll tell you how it goes. So when you get to that, when you get ready, this is the, I'll give you a checklist of stuff to do. Though what's going to be so cool is, you know, my, you know, my plan pending that I can afford it because flights are just astronomical right now is to get back up there for my birthday in July. 
So now it's like, well, shoot, Dave's going to be there too. Let's go. Done to your nothing, dude. I'll see Dundee you there. Done to your nothing, bro. <laughs> Let's go. I missed out last year. I wanted to come hoop with y'all. Yeah, dude, what a blast, man. It, and, oh, man, whenever you bring up Dundee and my birthday, I think about poor Robbie oh. just <laughs> blowing out his knee on that route, bro. Gosh. Oh, man. So, for those of you listening that don't know, my buddy Robbie, we were, I can't, gosh, this was years ago, and he's still dealing with it to this day. To this day. To this day. That's so rough. he's had like multiple surgeries and physical therapy. Essentially, we're, we're playing a pickup game of basketball. Nobody cares who wins. We're just messing around. And Robbie shakes this one teenager and takes him to the rack, and the kid just runs up behind him, two hands in his back, shoves him out of bounds. Now, of course, we're playing at the beach, and there's trees and all this stuff around. Robbie's foot gets stuck on a root. And he lets out this banshee scream that will haunt me for the rest of my life. Plus, you hear this snap. And he's just down on the ground. And the ambulance shows up. And the kid's acting all tough. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if I was like 10, 12 years younger, I'd beat the hell out of this kid, you know? But it's like, yeah, and he's still dealing with it all after all these years, man. And it's just... It's so messed up, dude. But of course, we would we would tease him about it, and you know, I would send him, you know, Ed Sheeran. Song. I was just gonna, I was just thinking of that song when your legs don't work like they used to before. I would, we would, you know, and I would be on the air poking fun, trying to make light of it. But talk about, dude, what a life changing thing, just out of the blue. And so I just salute you, Robbie, because golly, bro, that sucks. I think about golly, bro. That's the t-shirt. <laughs> I love it. I love that saying. Coming soon to davismedia.com. The Hanging with Homie official tee. Golly, bro. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out here hooping sometimes with 20-year-olds without full, I don't have full medical coverage, thinking like, all right, I'm going to play <laughs> three-point line to three-point line. I'm not driving the hole unless it's wide open i'm not driving the lane because like, you know i'm playing old man hoops now i'm not trying to get hit in the face i'm just trying to shoot threes and you know shake somebody but nothing crazy no crazy yeah. defense either no dude i'm always at my at the gym here uh vasa down the road and there's always just like People in there just pick up basketball all day Saturday, all day Sunday. I'm like, damn, I want to get in there. But it's like my back is so bad that I would be like a detriment to the team. <laughs> and then like it would it would probably go south really quickly. So you'd have to get a mic and just be like um the hype man from M1 and be like, oh baby, and just you know, hey, go yo. like uh, yeah, yeah, like half court, coach's box to coach's box. Yeah, it's hot sizzle. The professor. Oh man, that'd be that. That would be really fun, actually, to host something like that. I uh, dude, I still say. Ah, oh, you son of a. <laughs> Speaking of events, I recently got to DJ downtown Denver for the opening day for the Colorado Rockies. What dude, day was opening day? By the way, let's just set it, the record straight. <laughs> it was a. It was a Thursday. Okay. Okay. It was a Thursday. Not to be confused with what was in the liners for an entire week. <sighs> but it was on a Thursday. And, dude, I tell you, people down here, they take opening day so seriously, bro. Like, people were downtown 9 a.m., like, just packed the streets, man. And I show up to DJ at 10 to noon, and people are drinking Patron Wow. As they're having breakfast. I mean, I've been there a few times. <laughs> Dog, I could not believe it, especially as a person that doesn't drink. I'm like, golly, they're just going for it first thing in the morning. And then my people are, are telling me, yeah, we, we do this every year. It's a whole day thing. We wake up and start drinking, and then we go to the game, which is at about 2 o'clock. I'm like... So by the like seventh inning stretch, you're just sloshed. You don't even know what's happening. Yeah, it's well, just, it was and, madness. Uh, but the gig was fun. That's it looked cool I, from your Instagram. It looked like a huge venue. Like I saw this angle, camera angle from up above, and you had the the decks. Explain what the layout looked like. 
Well, it's a very interesting spot. Um, it's called Ophelia's, and I guess legend has it, it used to be a brothel way, way back in the day. Wow. So you walk in, and there's all this, like, artwork of the times of these, like, scantily clad women. Like, if you think back to, like, I don't know, like, olden times and s- sailors. Like and the they Old probably- West and stuff? Yeah. It's very, it's, I don't know, it's really cool, but they got, like, a state-of-the-art sound system and there's this whole upstairs with seating and a bar and then a downstairs with the big stage. So they're very much known for their like live music and DJs and they got the full light show and bar downstairs as well. I think there's even an outside portion of it. So you're down there, you know, DJing on the stage and you look out in front of you and there's all the people having brunch and they're bopping to the music and singing along as they're drinking and eating and stuff. And then you look up and it's just all those tables and all those people. And I was like, gosh, this is like a packed house. This is kind of cool. But you're a little bit disconnected from the upstairs because you're so far away, but you can see it. And the balcony just overlooks the stage. Everyone's looking down at you. Yeah, but it was really cool, man. And at the end of it, they were like, dude, we got to have you back. That was awesome. And I was like, I didn't know how hard I could go. Like my set finished at noon. So, I mean, people are drinking Patron at nine. They were, you know, but it was my first time doing it. So I'm like, okay, what I'm going to play is going to be like pop music like we do on the air, but it's going to be a little bit more infused with house and upbeat because a lot of the music on the radio right now is really slow. So you need those kind of house mixes to add to it. So my last two songs, I go into this like EDM remix of all the small things, which is like the uh, avalanche song for the hockey team out here. Oh, okay, cool. So everybody starts singing it and, you know, jamming along. And I did that right as I gave away two tickets for opening day. Nice. So like, and the, and the guy was there. He won and freaked out and was so pumped. And I dropped the track. And then my last song was an EDM remix of Fat Lip by Sum 41. Yeah. So it just has that four to the floor, right? That doof, 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 doof. And then it goes doom. Uh, 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 and the whole it, the place never fails to light up and it was super cool reaction i was like damn this is dope this is the last song but i left i left on like a super high note so i felt really good about it uh packed up as quickly as i could tweaked my back bro carrying my stuff and uh, i get to the car i head home spark up a coal and then i gotta go in and do the show but dude i was like falling asleep sitting in there in that chair waiting for my next break. I'd wake up. Ah, ah, ah. So the new hits, 95.7, a thousand bucks. I don't, I don't care if it's your phone bill, your light bill, your only fans bill. We're, we're paying your bills. I'll, it's just, you know, but I powered through it and, uh, dude, I slept so good that night. Cause it's like not old, but I'm, Getting old, but like I'm we talked about last old. week. We're getting there. We're yes. not there, but we're getting there. Yeah. So just a day like that just took it out of me. And I slept so freaking good that night, man. The things we say in our mid thirties. Yeah, a day like that just took it out of me, you know? Yeah. I was you know, I needed a just needed my good sleep and I woke up feeling <laughs> feeling nice. That's a conversation you, now. Yeah. Do you know what else took it out of me is uh, this weekend on Saturday, I hit up my buddy out here, Mile High Mike, sweet name by the way, and uh, there was this uh, this free fan expo happening in Aurora, which is the town that I live in. So we go to it, and it's just like cosplayers and comic books and retro toys and like vintage video games and like you name it, dude. So. I was only in there maybe a couple of hours. I dropped like a bill, picked up some really cool stuff that I was pretty pumped about to kind of add to the shelf. I got home. I edited together my mini, you know, 60 second vlog, which I think you saw. Yeah. Solid cut. Thank you. Yeah. I was pretty pumped about it because there was some really cool stuff there to see. And then once I got the VO done, which is the benefit of just having this set up in the room, you just plug it in. And I just like freestyled it you know and and then I get that posted 
And dude, I I crashed. I took a nap really quickly. And it, it was one of those, it was the best kind of nap. It was the unexpected nap. Ah, uh, you mofo. I'm... <laughs> I'm never in a spot where I can have an unexpected nap. That's why I don't have, I'm like sitting at my desk or I'm working out now with 75 hearts. So by the time I get up to my room and I'm in my bed, then I, you know, decide it's time to pass out. I couldn't really sleep last night. I think I'm just thinking about the next move. That's probably what's keeping my mind active. So I watched for love of the game because baseball season just started and I had to watch, you know, a good baseball movie. Yep. I'm just, um, yeah, it's just like so preoccupied with that, that it just, it takes over. I'm like wanting to get things done during the day and I still can, like we still do the pot, the show and I'm packing up some things, but I'm just totally, totally preoccupied. Like I've checked out of in my mind where I'm at and I'm just moved on to the next thing. Um, like I've already moved on from WrestleMania. Yeah. Where do you imagine you're going to, you're going to be recording the show now because you're going to have an, a, a, a yet the third location now in the, you know, history of hanging with homie. Where do you foresee that being? Um, well, I think I'll probably just, I'm going to like you, I'm going to do it in my room at, okay. um, at the Harding, uh, headquarters at B stacks yep. house. I got my key lights. I mean, I got the lighting, so it's going to be crap though. I'm going to have to get, you know, Get creative, creative with the angle on the camera uh, and the desk, but yeah, it'll probably be in there. So, M- Matty B's in the creek. Matty B's in the creek, <clears throat> but he'll dude. be he'll be moving, I think, to downtown Portland for the summer. So, dude, okay, it's gonna be some old port times this summer. I'm telling you, about dog. It. It's it, dude. It's just like it's such a it's such a flashback. For Man. you to be back at, you know, Harding headquarters and then right next door in the creek, it's homie headquarters. It's it's like what me and you were, now it's you and Matt, but then he's going to be gone for the summer. It's like, you need to get into there before you know who takes over. Well, they're going to take over again. Uh, of course. Yeah, but it's all right. It's it's paid, so it's it's all good. good. Yeah. Um, th- I'm just thinking ahead to the kind of content you know, that I want to make, um, this summer. And a lot of it, I think is going to relate to Ryan's brand cargo Bay, which you know, okay. you've know you already been a part of. I remember we shot some newspaper ads in downtown Portland. We did yep. some photos with you, which I was super proud of. I still have the cutouts. Um, but he's evolved the logo. That's what him and Matt are working on. And I was just talking to him about sales in the store already up. He said 10,000 from the same week last year. So they did their best year last year and they're already on pace to do better this year. That's so great, dude. Hell yeah. So it's exciting. Um, It's exciting for them. And I mean, I think it's just reassuring that early in the season, you're seeing good numbers, but so, you know, I'm going to like dabble there. I just kind of, um, I think just overall more excited that I'm going to be back around like the people I know, familiar settings. And I I came up with like, I love living where I'm at here in Gulf Shores. I don't love working here. Right. I don't know if you've ever felt that because usually the opposite is like, I like what I do. I just not in love with where I'm at. Yeah, man. I, I'm super grateful for the job that I have here. But with full transparency, if I could do it remotely from home, I would leave tomorrow. And that's nothing against the people of Denver, the people of of Colorado, the Mount, like none of that stuff. It's just my heart isn't here, you know? It's always in Maine, bro. That's both of us. It's always been there. And I've just, we've both taken this like long, circuitous route. And then eventually everybody comes back. Yeah, you know, and I think one of the things that have kept me away for so long is, you know, they're like, and this used to motivate me so much to almost to a point where it was unhealthy. And I want to know if those hearing this have kind of experienced the same thing. It's almost like there's people waiting for you to come back to say, ha, I knew he couldn't do it. I knew he wasn't better than me. 
I knew he wouldn't accomplish more than I have. He's a he's he's a quitter. He's a he's right back here, you know? And that used to motivate me so much to where I'm like, no matter what, no matter how bad it gets, I'm not coming back because I'm not giving those people the satisfaction. Now, as I've gotten older and I've matured, that's very much changed. And if I do decide to come back, it's just because I miss home, not because there aren't opportunities out here for me. I think I've proven that tenfold, you know? You have. So was that like a a factor for you ever? No, I I think... um... As soon as I got to college, I knew I had the chance to, I didn't have to live at home anymore. I, and I got a job for like three weeks out of school. And so then I lived in the Bay Area for eight years. So I've lived away from home. Yay, yay, Ghost ride the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I lived there in New York, Boston with you in Nashville. I mean, a bunch of places. So um, I've done so much elsewhere that, that's again it's not factoring in now i i i would like to think that we are old enough and our peers are old enough that that's not even why do you have so much going on in your life why would you care yeah. but you know there's still people that would make that remark and i don't know where that comes from for them but it does exist you know uh yeah. but for me never thought about it i just said as long as i set out to do what i said and I get it accomplished, I can come back whenever. It's, and honestly, Maine is a cool place to live, and I don't like to say it all the time because I don't want everybody else to move <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited to be back. It's get to all the restaurants, all the great bars. All, I mean, it's got it all. It's got yeah, the winter. That's the only, uh, only thing that, okay, fine. I'll deal with it. Well, here's the thing. It's like, Winters out here in Denver are pretty rough too, you know, but it's like, if I'm going to make myself deal with it, I would rather do it in Maine than I would in Colorado because that's, that's home for me. Yep. Yeah. This is just, it's just all home, man. Like all I wanted to talk about thinking about this, this week's show is I just wanted to talk about home because I'm like ready to be there. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm glad you did, you know, because we've talked about, you know, kicking around different ideas about like main urban legends and myths. And, Dude, I want to you know, do that one so bad. M- yeah, main celebrities and and influencers, and really just given our our you know our hometown, our home state, our home city, the flowers it it deserves. You know, and I think that could all be really interesting stuff. But I wanted to kind of double back to that you know that whole thing I was telling you about. People are just waiting for you to fail. You know, maybe that was more of a mindset in my 20s, you know, because my whole, I don't want to say my whole life, because when you're like a young kid, nobody is thinking that way. But once I got into like my high school years, my teen years, really, it was always, well, Jeff will never do this. And then you do this. Oh, well, he'll never do that. Okay, he did that, but he'll never do these things. And then you do these things. Essentially, what they keep doing is they just keep moving the goalpost. Right. And I don't know why people do this. It doesn't affect them in any way, shape, or form, or at least it shouldn't. So why are you putting these parameters on me? Maybe not so much anymore. Maybe secretly people are. But it was something that I definitely felt all through my teen years, all through my 20s. And it was like, oh, you think you're going to be a rapper, you think people are going to pay to come see you? It's like, okay, well, I put 600 people in Port City. They paid to come see me. I performed in front of a thousand people at state theater. You know, they came to see me. It's, oh, well, you'll never actually be like a DJ. Okay. Well, I did that. Well, I mean, you'll never be on the radio and like, you know, host your own show. Okay. Well, I did that. I don't know, man. Why do people do that? It drives me fucking crazy. I don't understand. Like, why are you moving the goal? This should not matter to you. Focus on your own stuff. Or is it all in my stupid mind? No, it's, it's, you're aware of it. You may not hear it directly, but you're aware it's being said. And maybe sometimes you even catch people saying it to you. But in the words of Anthony Anderson from Hustle and Flow, you got two groups of people. 
You got walkers and talkers. And people yep. who are doing the walking don't have time to talk. Nope. So if somebody's talking, that just tells me, well, if you have this much time to talk, you're not doing whatever it is you should be doing. Yeah. And back to your, you know, the mindset thing from teens to 20s to now, once you start checking some of those big boxes on your goals list, then you realize, oh, wait, this is my list. I don't even have to share it with other people. And now that I've checked a couple of things off, that's all just white noise and it's still not affecting me. Even if I do hear it, I'm not paying attention to it. I'm going to keep moving forward um, because like you said, it, it doesn't affect, you know, your check, how you eat. Like it's not taking food off your table. I just, you know. I used to really let it get to me a lot more back then than I do now because my mindset has changed so much. And I think that's because I'm getting older, not old, getting older, <laughs> older. And, uh, you know, different things matter to me now. Things, uh, you know, things like uh, status and like all that BS. I used to really matter to me. Now it, it's just like, I just want my time. I just want peace and quiet. I just want to create stuff that I love. I just want to be around the people that I love. And those are the things that really matter to me now. Beforehand, I, I definitely cared about what people thought. Um, I can't say honestly to you that I don't care anymore but it's certainly in like the lower single digits r rather than always worrying about what people are thinking and what people are saying. But you're right. There's the walkers and the talkers. And you know what the kind of people that I've always didn't like, and I've always wanted to make sure that I wasn't one of these folks Who's is that? the people that talk about what they're going to do rather than just let you see it as it happens or after the fact it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to this and I'm going to that and I'm going to this. And then those same detractors that I was talking to you about just a few minutes ago, oh, they're waiting with bated breath. I'm waiting for him to slip up and not follow through with one of the things that he or she says they're going to do. So it's like, well, why not bypass all that? And why not get to a point where it's like, don't, don't be a talker, be a walker. I've always like... I'm just going to let people see it. I'm never going to tell you what I'm going to do. You're just going to see it as it's happening. And gosh, that just takes so much like stress off. No, it does. The, the more I accomplish and put the blinders on, the less I don't even have time to stop and think about it. So, and I, I don't know what episode it was, maybe the last one or the one before, but going back to how I like to keep myself busy, but not in a bad way. I like to have my day time blocked out. So I know, cool, my day is full of stuff. Yeah. I'm not, I'm actually less stressed by knowing that I've, I've got all these things that I get to do. If I leave it all the way open, that's when anxiety creeps in. And I say, well, I didn't even plan anything. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? I only have this one thing. And yeah, the busier I get, the less I even have time to sit there and be like, huh, I'm going to spiral on this. What this person said years ago <laughs> that is still yeah. in my head. Why is it in there? I don't know. They probably forgot about it, but I didn't forget about it. Yeah. And, and so go yeah. ahead. instead of spiraling, I just say, I got, I got a workout to do. I got to email Jeff. I got to do this. I got to follow up on that. And it's just, that's how I keep it at bay. Two things. Isn't that the trick of, switching the way you think. And it's a lot easier said than done. It's, well, I get to do these things today rather than, ah, I got so much that I have to do today. That's, you got it. That's it. Any evolution in your career or personal life or spiritual or otherwise, it's just mindset. Y yeah. You, your opinion, you can get new information and at any moment you can change your attitude. You can change the way you think about Oh, I learned a new fact. I actually don't agree with that anymore because now I have new information. You can change. It's not flip-flopping. It's you can go from being one side of the coin of, hey, Jeff, we have to record this way to I learned something. Okay, I see what you're saying. Let's do it that way because now I've understood it. Like teaching me the way to mix uh, vocals and get them to sit in the middle, 
I never knew that all my years, never knew it. And then I said, all right, I'm going to apply that. And I said, that is a great way. Let's do that. Instead of being stubborn and being like, well, that's not how I do it. So we're not that, that literally makes zero sense. Yeah. I hear you. It's for me, it's always been like, I don't have too much pride about anything, whatever you can recommend or add to the mix. That's going to make the overall presentation better. Let's do that. Cause that's, that's the ultimate goal. No, the, you want the product to be the best. We're not just doing this for us. We're doing this for the audience that shows up and messages us and says, Hey, I noticed this. Okay, cool. I'll take that into consideration because you're paying attention. And why would I not respond to you? Like right now, I'm dealing with so many technical issues, even though I love Streamlabs. Like my feed is cutting out. Um, I'm not I hearing noticed. things. I was trying want. to fill some time for you. A little you bit did earlier. a good job, and I was yes. just and I was sitting here like, but my lens is still out, and my camera is still on, and then I'm like, activate, deactivate, it came right back, and so this is a good masterclass, and this is how you just do it on the fly, and yeah. I'm just letting you all into that instead of. I could have pretended and I could cover it up and that'd be one way to do it. But I feel like since it's a podcast format, I wanted to teach you. This is how you can keep a conversation going. If you have a pro like Jeff over there, he's going to recognize what happens. <laughs> you get paid for it. So you're literally well, a pro. Right, yeah. I guess um, so. It was like Snoop Dogg at WrestleMania. Oh, somebody Dog. got injured. I got to oh, think on my feet. This is getting streamed to millions of people. Tons of people are paying. All right, I'm just going to take out The Miz, and I'm going to have my own <laughs> WrestleMania moment, even though I'm a Hall of Famer already. Oh, it's so good, dude. That's, that's what it takes. Just You can do it on the fly. It's not that big a deal. We're on a floating rock through the universe. Everything, it's not that deep. Yeah, I love when you say that, because, dude, I get caught up in my own stuff so much. So much. I'll, I will say this though. How cool has it been? This is episode 13 now. Yep. So 13 consecutive weeks we've done this show. And every week I go into it and my nerves are high. My anxiety is high. My worry is high. And then just a couple minutes into the conversation, it all goes away. And I'm looking here, we're about 50 minutes in. And I'm like, holy smokes, you know? And it's been so cool just all the different feedback we've gotten from people that have listened to the show or watched it on YouTube and, you know, have come across the, the reels on Instagram and, and you've pumped out some super great ones lately. And man, it's just, it's so cool for people to care about what you're doing, but this is equally as important for me to do just to get some things off my mind, get some things off my chest to talk to my best pal about as it's impactful for other people. And I think we sometimes forget about that. Now we do. I think this is why folks say guys, instead of going to therapy, they start a podcast. But let me tell you, I do both. And I know he does both. So you can't say that about our show. Right. We're different. <laughs> we do. We do it. And then some, oh, man. I just, it, it's like, it, it, you can't, the illusion of control, when you think you have control, you don't, you realize how little you have, mm -hmm. like this technology is great when it works, but I, I'm not even touching anything. If something stops or freezes, I met the mercy of this thing. Yeah, dude, I just had this, like one of those moments on Friday where I just said, oh, technology. And it was because I had so many of our, our reels and so many things that I had filmed at work on my phone that the storage was getting really full. <laughs> so it started just to uninstall all these apps for me, right? Just without even asking me. And one wow. of the apps that it uninstalled was my State Farm Drive Safe. Oh, and no. that's what gives me my discount <laughs> so I'm not paying crazy money for my, for my insurance. And they call me and they're like, hey, you haven't driven your car in 30 days? And I was like, well, no, that's not accurate at all. I, I was just in it this morning. <laughs> they go, well, because what they do is they give you this little, you know, white tab and you stick it on in, into your car so it knows when it's like connected to your phone. They're like, yeah, you haven't driven your car in 30 days. What's going on? And I go, ah, oh, you know what? This app isn't even installed. I don't know what happened. And then I look and like... 20, 25 other apps are all just uninstalled, like Amazon and eBay and Chipotle, which really pissed me off. 
Um, <laughs> so I'm like going in and I'm like, okay, I can delete all this stuff. I can delete all this. And yeah, but you just, I was like, geez. So I had to like reset that up and put in my mile. And I was just, just like on the phone with them. I'm like, technology, you know? It's great when it works. That's what I always say. It's great when it works. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just like, I have, I have my perfect setup. It doesn't always work perfectly. No. There's so many other sayings we can come up with, but when you're in this business, that's just, you know, that's what you have to deal with. And that's what is so impressive about what you do at radio and what we do on the show is we not only have to make sure everything is rolling and working, but we have to have a conversation. I don't think sometimes people understand that that's so difficult, especially when you are self-producing. When you have a producer and somebody's in your ear, immediately you have this ease of tension because you know this other person will flag something if it's not looking good or sounding good. You don't even have to think about it. You just have to talk. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things, man, about... Because when I'm doing my on-air show, it's more like I'm a presenter. I'm still a personality. I'm still a radio jock, but I'm presenting things to you, you know? And yeah, I'll have conversations with, you know, phone callers and stuff. And you you want it to be as very natural as you can. And that's the challenging part is to make it all sound very natural and easy, but I'm presenting. And then on here... It's a complete 180. It's like you and I have such great conversations off air. And now I feel like I'm finally getting to the point where I'm super comfortable having them with you on the air, on the podcast. And I still worry in the very back of my mind, is this interesting? Are people going to give a sh- Do they really, you know? But yeah, I think, I think there's some real value, you know? It's always what's in it for the listener, right? And what's in it is you just get to kind of be a fly on the wall as you've put it in our conversation. And I think we've had a pretty damn good one today. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. Same. I, inherently, if it's interesting to you, it's gotta be interesting to someone else. So the fact that you thought about it, especially when you and me are chatting, you're like, Oh, like I want to bring this up. I think Dave's going to want to like hear this and probably want to talk to me about it. Uh, that's how I think. And then I also think it's just, it's another episode. We're going to have a ton more, probably hundreds. I'm guessing we're going to get into the three figures. Well, Man. we're going to do, so if it's 52 a year, if one, two, three, five, I would say this show is going to be like a four or five year show. It may change into a different platform. It may change into a different name. I don't know, but this conversation will keep happening anyway. And we just want to keep recording it, even if yeah. we feel like, oh, like, I don't know, that was just like a regular week. It's regular, but is it to everybody <laughs> yeah. else? You know, like you brought up the thing that I think we want to end on. I do, because I want to I wanna do at least my top like two picks, because I saw that WWE is going to do their draft again. Yep. And I, first I want to get like the, backstory if you know like where did this come from originally when when did they you know do it what was the idea yeah so you know i think this was kind of during the ruthless aggression era where they decided we're gonna we're gonna split up our roster and performers will be exclusive to raw or exclusive to smackdown which makes a lot of business sense because then you can have two touring shows rather than one right so over the years, they've done different, you know, drafts and superstar shakeups where, oh, all of a sudden this guy or this girl is going to be on this show now. And it's always super exciting. A lot of like pro wrestling fans, what kind of like, I don't know, the internet wrestling community is so fickle sometimes. So they, they're not ever really pleased with anything. My approach is just take it for what it is and just go into it trying to enjoy it, you know? But, yeah, the draft has been responsible for some pretty big moments, you know. And uh, Triple H just announced that coming up here soon, which I'm guessing will probably be after Backlash, which is going to be in Puerto Rico. So the following night on Raw, I'm guessing, is when they'll start 
the draft, and everybody is up for grabs. So you got to think of your top champions like Roman Reigns, uh, your Intercontinental Champion, Gunther, your U.S. Champion, Austin Theory, your Women's Tag Team Champions, Becky and Lita, on and on and on. And it's uh, kind of lately, people, I guess, were a little bit exclusive to certain shows, but everybody was kind of popping up everywhere, which is what ultimately happens. And then it's like, okay, no, reset, reset, new draft, fresh start. Because after Mania is that fresh start for the new season. So that's what that's what we're going to get here soon. And I'm really excited to see who's going to wind up where. And I thought instead of us trying to predict who we thought was going to go where, why don't we just act? I'll be GM SmackDown. You'll be GM a Raw. And we'll pick five people. Now, how it how, how it's going to break down from what I've seen in the past, and I sent you an email on this, yep. is we're going to do the fake coin flip. Dave's going to get the first pick. I'm just going to give you the first pick, right? Yes. And then I'm going to get the second pick in the first round, but then I'm going to get the first pick in the second round. So it's almost like Snake draft. one, one, yeah, exactly, back, forth, back, forth. So hmm. everybody's up for grabs, which means tag teams could be split up. I'm looking uh, at this now. It's all in alphabetical. Brawling, yeah, the brawling brutes could be split up. The bloodline could be split. Like, we don't know. This roster is just... You don't realize how many athletes there are. It's really deep, dude. And so if you're if you're at the top of this page, uh, you'll have your champions first. So you'll see Roman, he's the Universal and the WWE Champion. So he has both of those titles combined. Now, one of the things they're talking about happening is splitting up those titles, having okay. a championship on SmackDown, but then maybe bringing the big gold to Raw. So there's... You you don't really know like uh, you know raw raw uh, women's champion Bianca Belair could get drafted to SmackDown, but it's like okay, well how is this gonna work? You know, so I thought we could just you know real quick have some fun. And again, you can't draft teams or factions together, which they've actually done in the past. I think I remember, gosh, who was it? Ric Flair was the GM. He, I think it was him or Vince, and they drafted the entire NWO at one point. So we're going to try to keep it one-to-one No here. package deals. All right. First pick. Yep. Hmm. Well, I already have written down my, my, my prediction who you're going to pick. It's kind of uh, obvious. Is it? I think so. I think if I, I had the first pick, it's obvious. All right. My first pick is going to be Brock. Really? Yeah, because I just saw what he did at Mania, and he can always disrupt whatever is happening in the universe. So I think he's still got it. I, I'm picking him. So you're not going to take the champion. You're going to take Brock. I'm taking Brock. Champion's been champion for too long. It's time to shake yeah. things up. Well, so that means I get the second pick in the first round, and I'm going to go with... Roman Reigns. Oh, good pick. And you get the next pick. Yeah, so the first pick in the second round, I'm going to go with the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Ooh. All right. All right. Let's see. Who else is available? I got, I'm, I've got some size. Yep. I feel like I need maybe some speed, or I might go with another, another size person, another big dog. You got your Intercontinental Champion up there, Gunther. You got yeah. Drew McIntyre, Sheamus. I think I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Sami Zayn from the oh, Rock Tag Team Champs dude. and SmackDown Champs. Okay, okay. So Dave takes Sami Zayn. My next pick then is gonna be the Intercontinental Champion Gunther. He he looked like it's all business. Absolutely. Man, all right. All right. So wait a second. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I just got two back-to-back. That means you do. Okay, so now I get a back-to-back. Okay. Um, so you could take Gunther if you want. You know, I'm going to take... I'm going to keep the team together and take Kevin Owens. Oh, okay. Let's go. Which means, ultimately, I'm going to take Gunther. And my next pick here is going to be... 
man, it the roster's so deep, you know? It's yeah. It's let's see hella here. deep. It's like I already have the Intercontinental Champion. I don't as much as I'd like to have Austin Theory, the United belts. States Champion. Yeah, I think I want to I want to switch things up here. And I want to go with let me take a look here. I got to pee so bad. So if it looks like I'm grabbing myself, it's <laughs> Yo, not cuz I'm excited. All this water. It's cuz I have to urinate. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with the SmackDown Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. Ooh, good pick. Yeah. So to recap, Dave takes Brock, round one. I take Roman, round one. Cody, round two. And Dave takes Sami Zayn and KO, uh, round two and three. And then I take Gunther and Rhea. So who do you got? I'm going to take woo, it's hard. Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair. Okay. Because I think she's still got a bone to pick with Rhea. Yep. Um, so now you get the, the next pick in the round. All right. So this would be my fifth, right? This would round out my team. I think so, yeah. And then I'll, I'll, I'll do one and we'll call it wraps. Hopefully we have it. We actually have it like figured out linear. I know. Um... Let's see. Da, 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 da. There's so many. I want to make one more good pick. Who do I? And then got? you have all the young upstarts in NXT that could, you know, become major, major stars. You don't know. I know. Yeah, it's like, are you looking for the next Michael Jordan or? Yeah, you know, who's the who's the pick? Everybody's gonna miss out on man. Tell you NXT has Grayson Waller. I think he's really good. Uh, they they obviously have Braun Breaker. They got some pretty good talent over there, man. Let's. Uh, There's a guy tough. that I'm surprised you haven't taken yet, who could be the future of the company, and he's a current champion. And he's a current champion. Yeah. He just defeated John Cena at WrestleMania. You know what? That's a good suggestion. I'm going to take Austin Theory. A-Town down. Those are my picks, and I'm sticking to them. All right, so Austin Theory. And I'm I'm just going to do one more here. My last pick is going to be Jey Uso. Man, good. We're breaking up the bloodline. Well, we got Roman still over on my show. But anyway, I thought this would be kind of a fun way to kind of play GM ourselves and, you know, kind of pose the question to those of you hearing this. If you had the first pick or you had the second pick, like what would your roster look like? You know, I just think this is going to be a super exciting thing and it's going to be gangbusters for both shows. Yeah, I'm glad we did that. Yep, and I'm going to go take a piss now. Um, I've been holding it for a long time. All right. Next time you see us, Dave will be in a new location, his third on the show. Hopefully his got, last for quite a while. Seven days and, to get uh, there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube at your fave homie JR. For Dave, I'm JR. This has been Hanging with Homie. I appreciate you listening. Remember, it's cool to be you. P. Peace. Gotta pee. <laughs>